you know, looking back on the uh, Boston College win, really proud of the offense. We knew we were in for a strong challenge. Uh, by far the best defense that we have played all year. Uh, really pleased uh, with how the guys responded to a little bit of adversity there in the first half. Uh, you know, we've got off to fast starts in a lot of the other games at home, and then we go out there uh, down seven to zero. Uh, it's good to see those guys in that situation come back and respond. And then at halftime, um, even though we'd moved the ball and put some points on the board, you know, just weren't quite connecting like we wanted to in the first half. And uh, we really challenged them in the second half, and the guys responded. Um, also, uh, looking back, once we went back to grade the tape, one thing I think that was impressive that we can really build on are the long drives that we had. I think the four uh, touchdown scoring drives were 75 yards, 80 yards, 98 yards, and 85 yards. So I think we averaged on the four scoring drives an 85-yard drive and uh, against a defense of their caliber where they make you earn it uh, every play. That's something that I think we can really uh, build on and uh, was really good to see. I uh, can't say enough about the job Coach Caldwell and the offensive line did this week. Uh, they had a huge challenge with all the blitzes. It was really what your normal uh, game week, what you have to prepare for from a blitz standpoint. Uh, I would say that it was double than any other game that you prepare for. So that was a huge challenge. They did a great job. Also, Deshaun did a really good job of being able to identify it and flipping protections. You know, I think, um, uh, you know, I think Eric McLean, you know, he said at halftime that some of their guys on defense were getting frustrated because we were flipping the protection every time exactly where they were coming from. And so I think uh, you know a lot of that credit goes to Coach Caldwell, Coach Elliott, Coach Streeter, and then those those uh, offensive linemen up front, quarterbacks and backs, uh, taking some ownership and preparing for it because that's something that if you're not prepared, it'll show up in a hurry and, and can get ugly. Um, so really pleased with that. You know um, they make it very difficult to run the football. Uh, obviously averaging only giving up 43 yards in the in the rushing game. You know, so that was a challenge, but I did feel like we found enough uh, to, to keep them honest. <clears throat> and I think uh, Deshaun made a difference running the ball when those opportunities presented themselves and uh, really made a difference with his feet. We knew going in it was going to be a big uh, game in the passing game with all the man coverage. Uh, they are really going to challenge you and uh, bring a lot of pressure and make you have to connect uh, in the air and uh, to be able to go out and throw for over 400 yards Against the number one pass defense is something that we definitely can uh, can use as confidence as we continue to, to get ready. You know, looking at kind of the halfway point uh, from an offense perspective, you know, we're, we're excited because we don't feel like we've played our best game yet. We don't feel like we've played uh, up to our full potential yet as a group. But one thing that I think is really um, uh, positive is. You know, we've won some games by running the football when we needed to run the ball, and then we've won some games where we had to throw the ball and we were able to throw the ball and execute. And I think that's what you're looking for offensively is you want to be able to do both of them well uh, when you have to do it. And so I think we've shown that so far, and we're going to have to do that uh, as the competition continues to increase here uh, during the second half of the season. Uh, pleased with the wide receivers. You know, overall, probably the biggest thing I'm pleased with is uh, the depth and production that we're getting from all seven guys. And I, I say this week in and week out, you know, but I had seven guys that had at least 20 snaps. And uh, I've never had that as long as I've been here at Clemson coaching the wideouts. Um, you know, a couple things what that allows us to do uh, during the game, it allows our guys to stay fresh. You look at Artavis Scott's uh, touchdown there late in the game. You know, uh, that corner that was playing against him, that was his 63rd snap of the game because that corner played every snap. And for Artavis, that was his 39, 39th snap of the game. And so you're just a little bit more fresh than the guy across from you. And so we always talk to our guys, it's a 10-round fight, you know, and, and they got the same boxer in there, but we're able to, to kind of roll our boxers as we go. And so you really see that show up in the second half. Um, so really pleased with that. And then also it allows our guys to, to stay fresh, you know, for the long run that uh, we need to make here at the end of the year. Um, but in order to do that, you've got to be able to have guys that you can count on that can go out there and execute. And that's the thing I'm most pleased about. It doesn't matter if Hunter Renfro's in there, he's making plays. He comes out, Hopper goes right in making plays. 
and uh, the same way at the nine position. You know, Pete made some nice plays, and then um, you know Dion came in and really had two really big plays. And uh, so really just seeing the overall depth and quality in that group, you know, that's really what we said, you know, whenever uh, we lost Mike for the year is, you know, we, we might not have the guy in the room that's going to go and replace him with 1,500 yards this season, but we got more depth than we've ever had. So if, if we can get a little bit more from everybody in the room, we can make up for those yards and touchdowns. And uh, so far we're doing that. Um, you know, the long pass to Dion there late in the game, really pleased. That, that was actually a check that Deshaun did on his own. Uh, we had an initial call, and uh, the defense they came out with, that call wasn't uh, going to be the best call, so Deshaun checks it. And uh, we had Dion in the slot where he's not normally in the slot, but for the one play that we called, he kind of knew that play. So Deshaun looks to him, gives him a check, and I'm on the sidelines going, okay, we're about to find out if he's ready for the big show or not on third and long. And he executes it and goes all the way down. So those are those growth opportunities that as a coach you look for in games to be able to see if guys can do that. So really uh, pleased with his progress along with the other guys. Uh, Miami, big challenge. Uh, it doesn't take uh, very long watching the video. The first thing that, uh, that really stands out is the team speed. I mean, those guys can run uh, very fast, athletic, long. Um, you know, I think it'll be the best secondary by far uh, that we will have played up to this point this year. Um, they remind me a lot of the guys that we have, uh, McKenzie and J. Ron and those guys. That's the type of ability those guys in the back end have. Uh, you know, they're athletic up front. Their, their two ends are guys that uh, you got to get your hands on. Um, you know, very um, athletic and active and uh, definitely will create some issues. And uh, it seems like every week, we come back in here, we've got another challenge. Just a really good year, I guess, for defenses in the ACC. And uh, so it'll be another challenge. But I think our guys are looking forward to it. We've had a lot of fun at home. But in order to do the things we want to be able to do, we've got to go on the road and win on the road. And uh, this will be a big challenge. And uh, we've got a lot of guys from the state of Florida, uh, a lot of skilled guys especially. So uh, I know they'll be excited to play this week. Um, but we've got to really start over. And um, that'll start this afternoon when the guys come in for their meeting. So with that, I'll open it up. Well, to be completely honest, when we lined up, there was a lot of discussion because it was third and long. And I think maybe we we're up 17. And, and Deshaun had just taken a shot the play before. And so there was discussion. Do we just run the draw, or you know? And, and Deshaun actually came over and said he wanted to run this play, the empty play where we were going to have a deep pass concept, and uh, and we had an answer if it was too high. Um, but Deshaun, you know, he looked over to me on the sideline and gave me the signal for the check. And that check we don't typically do out of empty; it's more of a two by two check. And so I really didn't respond. And then he did the check to me one more time, and I said, "Okay, let's do it." And he got Dion's attention. He did it, and I just watched it happen. So, you know, we we haven't done that in practice before, but that just shows Deshaun's second year in the offense, understanding, and um, and then also Dion. I, mean, I, I think that's the first time Dion's ever run a seven cut, which he ran right there because he's in the boundary. He's not typically a slot receiver, and uh, so whenever he gave Dion the signal, that was a big moment for me. That okay, we're gonna find out. If this guy's ready or not, and not only did he run the route, he did a great job, got his depth, executed it uh, very well, and uh, just wish he could have got in down there, uh, got tight there at the uh, goal line. But I know our guys will give him a hard time. But yeah, that was that was uh, probably the that, and then uh, Artavis's touchdown, you know, was a, a really big deal because Artavis was not the primary target. He actually was the fourth option in a, in a regular read for that play. Um, but you know, we told our guys all week long that if you get press coverage, it doesn't matter if you're the first read or the last read, you better run to win. And, uh, and Tay ran to win. And you know, Deshaun felt very comfortable that, that Tay was going to go win on that matchup. So he forgot all of his regular rules and said, I'm going to take the matchup, which he's allowed to do. And uh, so I, I thought there was some really good teaching moments in there where you can see Deshaun making some good decisions and our guys being on the same page. And uh, so real pleased with that. Going back to Deshaun, or uh, Dion rather, um, have you noticed a significant change uh, from a mental standpoint in practice? Uh, it seemed like the lights went on. 
Yeah, I think uh, he's getting better uh, each week. And, uh, you know, and he's a little bit of a gamer. He's one of those guys, and I've coached a few of those guys before here that maybe play better than the games than they do in practice. And uh, But he, he, he's been getting better each week. I think for him, you know, he, he had a slant also in the game where he went one step and th instead of three steps. And so the timing's off a little bit. You know, he, he jumped off sides one time, probably had another one on one of his catches that he might have been a little quick. It was close. And so just those little things for a freshman, you know, are the things that he's got to continue to work on. Um, but, you know, I, I really feel, you know, and, and Ray Ray really, just the way the game went and the times he was in there that, you know, he didn't get the opportunities maybe that uh, we would like for him to get. But I think both of those guys are getting better as the season goes. And uh, that's really kind of, you know, I think we've got four freshman wideouts and only one of them played wide out in high school. You know, Hunter Renfro played quarterback, Ray Ray played running back, and Dion played qu played quarterback. You know, Trevion's the only one that played wide out. So, you know, we knew that there was going to be kind of some development. And the good news for them is it was not a year where they had to go out and be the guy day one, and we had to go through some kind of growing pains. They've been able to, to be able to play and get a lot of key experience, uh, but be able to kind of roll in there and not have to be the primary guy quite yet. But I think both of them are progressing very well. and. Um, I think we'll continue to, to make big plays and be a big part of it here as we go to the second half. You've been wanting to, to be able to spread the field vertically for several weeks now and, and the opportunities weren't always there for you. Uh, two questions. One, is there any detail that this was the type of game that you could, you could absolutely do it and continue to do it throughout the game? And two, when you backed off a little bit and began to take, take what they were giving you to kind of soften them and, and make them aware of it, well, as difficult of a game as it was for the guys in the box, uh, those offensive line, tight end, running backs and quarterbacks, very complicated scheme, very complicated game plan for them to get all that figured out. As complicated as that was, it was very simple and easy for our guys on the outside because they basically played two coverages. They were going to play man, which they had been in 77% of the time in, in the previous games, or it was going to be cover two, you know, which was you know 23% of the time. So we knew it was going to be one or the other. There wasn't a lot of disguising. And you know their deal is, hey, we're going to get in, in, in your face and challenge you. And in order to do that, to be able to hit those deep balls, you got to have execution up front. They're counting on getting there and rushing the quarterback, which they've done a lot. And then also execution on the throw and then execution on the release. A lot of things have to happen to be able to hit those balls. But I think the confidence we had in that is because that's what we see against our defense every day year round. You know, they play press. We, we joke that we have to wait till the season before we can see a little bit of zone coverage because in practice, that's all we get is man coverage. And, and we're going to get some talented guys. And uh, so we were excited about uh, the challenge, but also going into that game, you know, when you're playing a lot of man coverage, we had to have multiple answers for man. You didn't want to base your whole game plan of we're just going to take shots. If we hit them, great, we win. If we don't, then I guess we'll just lose. So we had multiple layers of uh, ideas for our man. So obviously the shots were a big piece. The next were the intermediate, the slants, and, um, you know, having some of those routes. And then also we wanted to get the ball out of the back and have the receivers blocking some crack blocks and get the ball out there. And so we had kind of three different answers uh, for the main coverage, and we had a couple answers for the zone. Um, so we knew, and we practiced it all week long. Uh, you know, our scout team gave us a great look, and um, it was exactly what we expected. We were just off just a little bit in the first half, and you know, I think we encouraged them a little bit to stay in the main coverage in the second half because we didn't quite connect like we wanted to in the first half. But uh, we knew uh, that we eventually would connect on those, and so we just had to keep faith in it, stay consistent, and uh, we're able to hit it. But I, I do think having a variety of ways to beat man coverage uh, was a key. And you know, we also had the the uh, little crossing route to leg it in there, and then you know, getting leg it involved down the goal, and just a lot of different ideas for that man coverage. Um, you know, that we'll be able to carry with us as we go. Most people are going to play that we play are going to play mostly zone, then get to third down, and then they're bringing the pressure and going man coverage. Whereas with Boston College, it was like every down was third down. And uh, so I think 
we'll be able to uh, carry over a lot of the stuff we were doing here uh, through the rest of the year, especially on third down. Jeff, these guys, you guys have built up a little comfort level here at home this first half of the yeah. season. How prepared do you think they are for these next couple weeks where they're going to be out of that comfort zone? Yeah, obviously Louisville, we got a little bit, a little taste of it and uh, definitely didn't play our best game, but I don't think it was a situation where we came home and said, man, our guys are scared to death to play on the road. But, you know, and that's what Coach Sweeney's message to the team will be today. Hey, to accomplish the things that we want to accomplish out in front of us, we got to, we got to play well on the road. That's great. We just set a record for the most wins at home ever, consecutive wins at home with 14. But now we've got to go win on the road. And um, so I think that'll be kind of that next challenge. You're always looking, especially with a team that's, that's winning and playing well, you're always, as a coach, looking for something to kind of challenge them. So I think that'll be the big challenge this week is can we go out and execute on the road uh, against a good football team? And uh, because we're going to have, you know, the very next week at NC State, you know, you're going to have several more of those as we go. But that'll be a big challenge. But, you know, do I, do I, am I concerned about it? Not really, uh, because you know I think Coach Sweeney and our coaches have done done a really good job of kind of uh, building into our guys that it doesn't matter where we play or who we're playing. It's all about us and it's about our execution. The external factors are not going to have any control, and really kind of building that mentality. I think our guys have bought into that, and uh, so we'll continue to stress that this week. To be completely honest, I don't think we've thought about it at all. I mean, just being 100% honest, we really haven't thought about it because, you know, I think to our team uh, and to our offense, you know, I think having the bowl game last year, you know, it, it didn't really feel like we were just getting started this year that this was the first time that we've done it. I think having that opportunity with a month with the offense, with the team, and then going out and having success in the bowl game, I think it made a smooth transition into the season. And uh, and then because of what we're doing offensively is uh, very similar s schematically to what we've done in the past. You know, I think Tony and I have been uh, very out in front that, hey, this is Clemson's offense. You know, this isn't about me. This isn't about Tony. This isn't about one person that's calling all the show, you know, calling the show and, and uh, kind of has the puppets on the string. You know, this is really about our guys and their execution. And that's really where our focus has been. Um, so I, you know, I, I don't think that uh, maybe on the outside that's a, you know, good storyline and something I think that would be a natural for people to continue to look at. But I think within our walls, our our players and and our staff feel uh, very comfortable and confident uh, with what we're doing. Yes, and we knew that. Um, you know, I, I kind of described it to my, my wideouts whenever I was really trying to stress to them the importance that they were going to have on this game of, of, of beating man coverage was going to be a big part of winning the game. You know, and I, I pointed to the wall and I said, see that wall right there? That's what the running backs are going to be running into all night. They've got four D linemen and they got two linebackers and all they do is run right through the gaps and they got a wall. So that's what they're running through all night. So we've got to make our plays stick and we got to make our plays count or it's going to be a long night but with that being said we did have to run we felt like we had to run the ball enough to keep them honest and uh, where they couldn't just get in sets just to take away um, you know the, the pass and then also I think up front you don't want to let that defensive front those linebackers be able to get where they can just pin their ears back and, and have a pass rush it's a little bit different whenever they have to to play the run as well. So we had to keep them off balance. And, uh, you know, I felt like we did that. Um, but, you know, it, it was just a little different look than maybe it looked the past couple of weeks uh, running the ball. We were able to really get some big holes in there. But a lot of that was scheme and what they were doing. They did a good job. And, and I think uh, Coach Elliott would tell you there was more there. Uh, we felt like there was a little bit more there than you know, I think uh, Wayne didn't have his best game. A few of the backs, there were some, some holes that were there. But it was a 
it was a different uh, different look than maybe what we've seen in the past. And so some of the holes were in different spots. And uh, you know, I think we've got a, a lot we can uh, definitely still improve in that area. Uh, but you know, we know we've got to be able to to run the ball and uh, really want to be balanced uh, if the defense will allow that their scheme. Yeah, you know, I think last year, uh, like I've said before, he, he was really learning what he's doing and what's going on. I think this year he understands the offense completely. And, uh, you know, we give him a, a lot of freedom. I mean, obviously, we're playing fast and, and doing a lot of things, so we're not a true check team that gets up there every play and is trying to check and, and get us out of one play and into another play. But if he sees things from time to time, he has freedom to, to make those checks. And uh, so we have a lot of confidence, but a lot of that comes from the meeting room, uh, from Brandon Streeter uh, and, and the quarterbacks in the meeting room pointing things out. You know, Deshaun's a great note taker. I mean, he's always going back through his notes, and he takes that very serious. So, you know, it's it's like having a coach on the field, um, being able to make those checks. Sometimes you, you see a lot of school, and, and we'll do it too. But but offenses they make the check from the sideline. So we'll see something in the box. All right, we want to check. We'll go check, check. We'll, we'll call the play. Well, now what defenses are doing, when you check, they check. So we're checking the play from the sideline because we've seen they're in man coverage. Well, when they see us check, now they're going from man coverage to cover two, and so you kind of defeated the purpose. So it's put even more importance on your quarterback being able to check the play on his own without everybody looking to the sideline. And I think that's what uh, allowed us to have success on that uh, that one of those last uh, big throws to uh, Dion. So, Jeff, uh, you know we're halfway through the season. I mean, you guys know where you are and what's out there to head nationally. Any concerns about? Hey, 34 points isn't enough. It's an eye test kind of thing because, you know, you guys win. You have a nice win at home and you drop a spot. You know, I really don't think so. Um, the first thing I told the offense: always get an opportunity. Tony and I do a good job of kind of splitting our opportunities, who talks to the offense win. And so Tony's up in the box before the game. So I kind of get that five minutes before Coach Sweeney calls the whole team up. And the first thing I told him Saturday is our number one goal tonight is to get our sixth win. That's our number one goal. It's probably not going to look pretty because of what they're doing on defense. We're going to have some adversity that we're going to have to overcome. But that's our number one goal. Forget all the rest of it. You know, it's great, all the stuff we talk about after the game with three consecutive games, 200 yards rushing and this and that. Those are fun things to look at after the game. But, you know, really our, our goal is to win the game. And, and, you know, and another thing we've really challenged our offensive guys because we've been uh, very fortunate on offense at Clemson to have a lot of talented players come through here and all the records that we've had individuals set from a passing standpoint, receiving, all those type of things. You know, so we, we've really challenged those guys that, hey, we, we've broken all the records. We've done all that. But what we haven't done is won all the games to be able to get to the big one and, and, and win an ACC championship and do those type of things. And so let's just worry about winning the game, whatever it takes. And, you know, I commended our guys last week that I feel like we've got a very unselfish uh, group in that, in that offensive room. We've got the most depth we've ever had at the wide receiver position. We got the most guys playing at running back that we've had. Tight ends. I think we played six or seven tight ends. You know, we're rolling a lot of guys. And so when you got a lot of guys that have the opportunity to play, it's just natural for guys to want to become <coughs> selfish and be about me and about, about my stats. You know, I, I don't read much stuff in the media, but sometimes I like to kind of read what my players are saying on a Monday to kind of see where their mind is. And I love reading, you know, Artavis Scott. I think he got asked last week, he got asked, hey, you haven't quite been targeted as many times as in the past. Are you worried about your numbers and this after last year, you know, being a freshman All-American, you know, and I think he came out and said, hey, I'm just trying to do whatever I can do to help us win. And then he goes out the very next week, you know, and has his best game of the year. And so, you know, I really think our guys have bought into that. I think Deshaun's bought into that. You know, he hasn't been worried the first half of the year about what his numbers look like. He knew that it was coming. But, you know, I give Coach Sweeney ultimate the you know ultimately the credit for that because he's done a good job from a team standpoint of making it hey it's a one game season let's go win we don't have time to worry about anything else let's go win and what we know about our schedule and the league we play in and 
the teams that will play. If we take care of business on our schedule, I don't think it matters if we got 44 points or 34 points, as long as we're uh, winning and do what we need to do. And so that's our goal, and we'll stay committed to it. To be honest, it's not. Um, you know, it's it's not anything uh, that we talk about in our room, and we really, you know, Coach Sweeney again. He talks to the guys about the beginning of the year, so the polls don't matter. Now that we're ranked higher, the polls don't matter. And I, I think, you know, as you play the entire season, some of those teams that are in front of us have to play each other. So there's going to be opportunities. I, you know, from a big picture standpoint, I don't really see a situation where. If we take care of our business, you know, in our league and all that, with the teams that we're going to have to play and beat to be able to get there, you know, there's not a big concern on our part that we would get left out or something that we need to go and, and try to have these, um, you know, splashy wins or how many points we need to score or whatever. I mean, we're we're trying to win, we're trying to score, and we're trying to win every game, whatever it takes, and then uh, I, I think we'll be fine uh, at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, that's our goal is to be undefeated. And obviously, if, if, if you lose a game, then you do put yourself, you know, out there and, and, and other people. But, you know, if we continue to take each game one at a time, continue to win, then, you know, I feel like we control the cards for our destiny. And that's really what we're focused on now. Yeah, I think they have the same thing on defense with J. Ron and McKenzie. And, you know, the number one thing is you don't want to play the game during the week. Uh, they're going to be fired up. They're going to go out there and go full speed. And you just can't play the game during the week. And then also pregame, you know, our, our guys will get a little too excited. I think DJ Shea has been a good addition to our uh, pregame. But our guys will get a little excited during pregame. I have to kind of remind them that, you know, we are going to play four quarters today and you're going to need a little bit of that energy. So let's cut it down to two dance moves instead of four, uh, if we can get there. So we've made progress a little bit. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's the big thing. It's just, and also, you know, going on the road and you got a quick turnaround, you know, all those type of things. There'll be a little bit of coaching that goes in this week, especially those young guys. And, you know, our goal is for them to be at their peak come 12 o'clock Saturday. And, uh, and there's a lot of things mentally and then also physically with their bodies and all those type of things. Uh, to be sure we're, we're there because we're going to need to be. These guys can run. I mean, this, this isn't going to be a situation where we can just run by the guys lined up in front of us like maybe has happened uh, a little bit earlier in the year. I mean, these, these guys are very athletic. Uh, we knew about them during the recruiting process. They can run, and, and it's going to be more about our fundamentals, our technique, and all that, and getting open more than just team speed. Dabo talked this weekend about how solid Nick Pye has been. How impressed have you been with Chris's development over the course of the yeah, I've been very pleased with him, um, you know, for a true freshman left tackle. You know, it's a little bit different playing a skill guy out there. The closer you get to the ball, the more challenging it is for a freshman. You know, so those offensive linemen, I think it's very difficult. Uh, you know, Mitch, I think he, he had one or two plays he wishes he could take back Saturday. But really, it's the first time all year that that's even happened. I mean, so to go halfway through the season and to be able to play the way he's played, and, uh, you know, I, I say all the time the best part about Mitch is we haven't noticed him. You know, and for an offensive lineman, that's a good thing when you don't notice them. Because usually when you notice them, it's because they've given up a sack or a guy ran by them. But, um, you know, he's, he's been a big part of, of what we do. And really, all those guys up front, I mean, it's, it's hard to believe, you know, you've got five new offensive linemen up there that are going out there and, and playing as well as I believe we've played up front in the last four years. So that's a testament to Coach Caldwell and to that, that new group of offensive linemen going in there and, and uh, executing and doing what they've done. Eric McLean's been a great leader. Y'all see him a good bit. Y'all know what, what we have in him. Um, but those, get, those guys, I mean, they, they take a lot of ownership in that room where maybe in the past some of our best offensive linemen maybe that just wasn't in their, um, you know, the, part, part of who they were. But these guys take a lot of ownership. I know when we presented the challenge they were going to have last week with Boston College, 
I mean, them, them guys took it serious. They took it among themselves, had meetings on their own, volunteer meetings where McLean and those guys were doing stuff. So I, I really like what we have in that room. And, and Mitch is doing great and only going to get better. Yeah, well, I think Deshaun, he said it after the game. He, he missed a few of the throws. Um, you know, it's kind of what I was talking about. One of the advantages that we have is that we've got seven receivers playing. But the disadvantage to that is everybody's a little bit different. Everybody's release takes a little bit different timing. Um, then you got guys, you know, their speed down the field is a little bit different. And so there's a little bit of that that goes on. But, you know, we understand that. We still think it's an advantage to play a lot of guys. and so. That's part of it, uh, but you know, also, you know, he, he had a lot coming at him. You know, he, he knew what he had had coming to him. Kind of, you know, if you go back to the the bowl game where Cole Stout stood in there, and made the great throw to Jermon Hopper, and got hit in the mouth, and that was a big check on a house blitz that you only get once or twice a game. I mean, that's pretty much what we were getting every play, and uh, so it was a little different being. So I think early on. You know, making sure that our protection was sorted out right, getting the b ball to the right place, you know. And, and that's what it takes. I mean, that's why they play so much man coverage and do what they do and why they ha they're having the success they're having on defense is because they make you be perfect. They make you protect it, have time, make the perfect throw, make the perfect re release, and be in the right spot. And, uh, you know, I feel like Deshaun, you know, we felt like uh, Deshaun could make those throws and do that where maybe some of the – we felt like Deshaun could make those throws and, and put us in that position. But, you know, we weren't, we weren't overly concerned. Obviously, we were disappointed. You know, we went in there at halftime and felt like we didn't complete a pass. And Tim hands me the stat sheet. And we had 191 yards pass in the first half. You know, and I went, wow, okay. If we start hitting these, this thing will really take off. And, uh, you know, it's just, you know, like a, a great player. Michael Jordan misses some shots. You're going to keep passing to him. <laughs> keep letting him take those shots because he's going to hit them. And so, you know, we, we've uh, – you know, we've seen it in practice, and we, we knew he's just going to relax. And it was good to see him come back and respond the way he did uh, the second half and put the ball where it, where it needs to be. And uh, that's just the process of being a quarterback. Chad, was that the same, the same theory on Deshaun's interception? Just they were forcing him to be perfect? And yeah, I think they're really the only one that was on.